everyone. I hope you're all having an amazing day. In today's video, I wanted to share with you about a dozen recent macro shots of several species, including a few that I only encountered for the very first time. All the images were taken with my good old trusted Canon 80D APS-C camera, my Canon 100mm macro lens with image stabilization, and I also used the Raynox DCI 250 snap-on lens for extra magnification. For the majority of my macro shots, I always tend to use a flash, which is the Canon EX RT2, and I also had my usual reflector diffuser kit. If you want to know more about my gear, then feel free to have a look at the playlist above, which will contain all the relevant videos, including in-depth reviews of every single piece of gear that I own. Anyway, let's get those images up and I'll talk about each species a little. Before discussing the images, I'd like to briefly cover the exposure settings. I used my go-to aperture of f14 for every single shot, as that gives me enough depth of field without introducing much diffraction. The shutter speed varied between 1 60th and 1 80th of a second, which was enough to keep the ISO low and still freeze the action with the help of a flash. The ISO I used was between the base ISO of 100 and kept at 250. The first subject looks like a false chinch bug, which is endemic to North America, and we're not supposed to have any here. If you have any idea what this species might be, please let me know. They suck sap from stems and underground plant parts, weakening plants. Apparently, under the right conditions, they can become a very serious pest to cultivated grass and corn, for example. The next couple of shots are of a leaf curling spider. They are a species of orb beavers that protect themselves from predators by sitting inside a curled leaf. They hoist the leaf from the ground and using silk threads, curl it to form a protective cylinder, silk shut at the top and open at the hub. They then sit in this cylinder with only their legs showing, feeling for the vibrations of a captured insect. The curled leaf protects them from birds and also parasitic wasps. The next couple of portraits are of a honey brown beetle. This species is native to southeastern mainland Australia and Tasmania. They are found in forests, woodlands and even urban areas. Honey brown beetles feed mainly on dead plant and fungal matter and adults are relatively slow flyers. Keep an eye out for my next video, which will be dedicated to show a series of images I spent hours taking and I'm really excited to show you the end result. You might be familiar with this next species, which is a tiny long-legged fly. This particular genus contains many described species. What I like about them is how beautiful those iridescent colors are and the interesting markings on its abdomen. They tend to be extremely skittish and very hard to approach and fly off most of the time as the flash goes off, so I was quite happy with especially this second image. This next photo is that of a sweat bee. This genus contains over 1,600 species, which is remarkably large. They exhibit high variability in size, coloration and sculpture. I found this tiny fella resting briefly on a blade of grass. Isn't it adorable? This next specimen is a tricolored soldier beetle, which is normally found in Eastern Australia and Tasmania. As you can see, the head and wing covers are black, the thorax is orange, and the abdomen has yellow colors. This is indicative of a very strong warning signal. Soldier beetles are known to produce defensive toxic secretions when disturbed. These next two shots are of a Victorian huntsman spider. Huntsman spiders are large, long-legged spiders. They are mostly grey to brown, sometimes with banded legs. Many huntsman spiders, including this species, have rather flattened bodies adapted for living in narrow spaces, for example under loose bark or rock crevices. This is aided by their legs, which instead of bending vertically in relation to the body, have joints twisted so that they spread out forwards and laterally in a kind of crab-like fashion. They are found throughout Australia and mainly feed on insects and other invertebrates. Our next subject is a stiletto fly. The family of stiletto flies is rather large too, consisting of about 1600 species. Adults are hairy or bristly with slender bodies. They are usually found in open areas such as uh, pastures. I really like that I managed to get at eye level with the specimen and that almost the entire body was in focus. And I was also lucky in terms of a clean composition with the way those two leaves framed up this particular shot. In the top down shot, you can see how iridescent those wings are. The next couple of shots are of a shield bug, also known as sting bug. I'm not entirely sure what the species is. Some sting bugs are predators of other insects. These predatory sting bugs can actually help protect crops against destructive pests. 
They eat caterpillars, beetles, and even plant-feeding sting bugs. Sting bugs excrete odorous bodily fluids as a defensive mechanism when threatened. If the toxic fluid gets into the human eye, it can cause unexpected chemical burns or injury. Patients whose eyes come into contact with these bodily fluids should rinse their eyes very thoroughly and immediately seek medical attention. This information pertains to the species called the bran marmorated sting bug, which is endemic to Australia. In this second image, you can see its molted exoskeleton, which looks quite fascinating in my opinion. I spotted it not too far from where I grabbed shots of this specimen. The next image is of a robber fly. They are also called assassin flies. They are powerfully built bristly flies with a short stout proboscis. Proboscis is basically a feeding tube that is attached to the head of the insect. The name robber flies reflects their notoriously aggressive predatory habits. They feed mainly or exclusively on other insects and as a rule they wait in ambush and catch their prey in flight. This next photo is of a lot of tiny old beaver spiderlings which I spotted at the local reserve as I was looking for subjects in the undergrowth. I tried to create a stacked shot but they were moving around quite a bit. They are the most common group of builders of spiral wheel shaped webs often found in gardens, fields and forests. It's an interesting fact that some old beavers do not build webs at all. Instead they produce sticky globules which contain a pheromone analog which attracts male moths of only a few species. These get stuck on the globule and are reeled in to be eaten. These couple of shots are of a grey plant hopper. They are a native species as well but have been introduced to New Zealand too. It is quite widespread and can be considered a minor pest in some areas. They have three pairs of legs and can jump quite far when disturbed. They feed on the phloem of plants, which is a vascular tissue in plants responsible for conducting sugars and other metabolic products from leaves. This next series of shots are of so-called gum tree hoppers. This name was chosen because all species are found only on eucalypts. Adults and nymphs are usually found in groups tended by ants. The presence of ants presumably helps to discourage predators and the bright black and white or red and black coloring is probably aposomatic, warning of the protection that the ants provide. You can also see in some of these shots, what I find very intriguing is that the ants seem to be drinking the excretion, which I assume is a kind of honeydew similar to what aphids produce from consuming plant sap. I'm really excited to show you this last series of images of a gorgeous, beautifully colored checkered cuckoo bee also known as cloak and dagger cuckoo bee. At first glimpse, I thought it was a blue banded bee, which is actually the host species it parasitizes. This parasitic cuckoo bee is a so-called kleptoparasite, which refers to the behavior of laying their eggs in the nests of other bees, reminiscent of the behavior of cuckoo birds. Females of cuckoo bees are easy to recognize in almost all cases, as they lack pollen collecting structures and do not construct their own nests. They often have reduced body hair, abnormally thick exoskeleton and also saber-like mandibles. I was extremely happy to encounter this gorgeous specimen and absolutely mesmerized by those beautiful colors and patterns on its body. I hope you enjoyed the video and you like the images. If you have any questions or any kind of feedback, then please leave a comment down below. Also feel free to hit me up on Instagram. I always like to look at everybody's work. Also, if you're new here, please consider subscribing if you enjoy the content. Thank you so much for watching and see you guys very soon in the next one.